Hello students, myself Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I wish you a very warm welcome to this section of Zoology Lectures. The topic of our discussion today is oogenesis. Oogenesis refers to the process of formation of female gametes as I have written here. Oogenesis is process of formation of female gamete. What is female gamete? Ova or the egg cell. The male gamete is sperm. Formation of sperm is spermatogenesis. So, we are going to discuss oogenesis that is process of formation of the female gamete. Now, as you know that uh, the primary sex organs of the female are ovaries. Ovaries are paired intra-abdominal structures which are involved in the formation of the gamete as well as production of sex hormones. Why we say that ovaries are primary sex organs? Primary sex organs are directly involved in gamete production, gametogenesis. Secondary sex organs like fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, these do not directly form the gametes. They play other roles. These are involved in the transportation of gametes, in the maturation of gametes or they assist in reproduction in some way. So, when you say that ovaries are primary sex organs, that means ovaries are directly involved in the process of gamete formation and ovary is forming what? Ovum, the egg cell or the female gamete. When the developing baby in the uterus of the mother is a female, I mean to say if it is a female baby, then the ovaries of the female baby are formed during 11th to 12th week of pregnancy. Please remember, the ovaries are formed during 11th to 12th week of pregnancy. And if it is a male baby, the testes are formed during 7th to 8th week of pregnancy. That we will discuss in detail when we will discuss spermatogenesis, sperm production. So, I am saying that ovaries are formed during 11th to 12th week of pregnancy and the process of formation of the female gamete begins during intrauterine life. As I have written here, it begins before birth of the female baby that is during her intrauterine life. That means, when the female baby is inside the uterus of her mother, her ovaries start forming the female gamete that is ova. But we will see that this process begins but gets interrupted at different stages. So, let us come to this process in detail. As you can see here, primordial germ cells or the PGCs, they are present in the ovaries before birth. There are two ovaries, right ovary, left ovary. Say I draw a rough representation of an ovary. Say this is the cortex region of the ovary. This is the medulla region. This is hyalus from where the blood vessels and the lymph vessels, nerves, they enter into ovary. So, this outer region is called what? Ovarian cortex. Cortex has follicles in different stages of development. What is a follicle? When I say ovarian follicle, that refers to an oocyte surrounded by different layers. There are different stages of follicular development. We will discuss in folliculogenesis. There are primordial follicles, primary follicles, secondary follicles, tertiary follicles, graphene follicles. When you use the term follicle, what does it mean? Follicle with reference to ovary means an oocyte surrounded by granulosa cells. We will discuss these granulosa cells in detail. So, with reference to ovary, the follicle means an oocyte surrounded by granulosa cells which provide protection, nutrition to the developing oocyte. In general, the follicle word means group of cells enclosing a cavity. Follicle term we use for thyroid gland also like thyroid follicle, hair follicle. So, follicle means group of cells enclosing a cavity. 
with reference to ovary when we say the ovarian follicle is an oocyte surrounded by granulosa cells. So, what we have to discuss is that how this oocyte is formed. Please remember oogenesis and folliculogenesis will discuss as to different processes. Folliculogenesis refers to formation of the follicles. Oogenesis refers to formation of the oocyte which will later on form the ovum. So, I was telling you that primordial germ cells are present in the ovaries before birth. There are lakhs and lakhs of primordial germ cells. These are amoeboid in shape. The primordial germ cells are amoeboid in shape. These undergo mitosis to form more and more oogonia. Oogonia also undergo mitosis to form more oogonia. So, we can write here this way that oogonia also undergo mitosis to form more and more oogonia. These oogonia undergo growth phase. Growth occurs, the size of the oogonia increases and we call them as what? Primary oocytes. In primary oocytes, meiosis 1 starts. Now, you know that meiosis is further divided into two substages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So, meiosis 1 starts but gets arrested at diplotene stage of the prophase 1. You know that this has further stages, meiosis has liptotene, then uh, pachytene, diplotene, dikinesis, all these stages you have already discussed in your class 11th syllabus. So, meiosis starts but gets arrested at diplotene stage. All such oocytes in which the meiosis is arrested are called dictate oocytes. So, there are lakhs and lakhs of oocytes. Meiosis has started but it is getting arrested at a particular stage that stage is the diplotene stage of meiotic prophase 1 and such oocytes in which the meiosis is arrested are called what? Dictate oocytes. Clear? Now, this is happening before birth. That is when the female baby is inside the uterus of the mother. These stages, these steps which we have discussed, they have happened before the birth. When a female baby is born, all the oocytes in both her ovaries are in the arrested stage of diplotene and they are called dictate oocytes. So, I have marked stage from here till here, it is before birth, right? So, when a female baby is born, she is having all the oocytes arrested in the diplotene stage and we call them as dictate oocytes. Now, when will this meiosis resume? The oocytes which are arrested in the diplotene stage, they will resume their meiosis during puberty. When a female baby, she attains the age of puberty that is sexual maturity and when menstrual cycle starts, when her endocrine glands are developed enough to secrete sufficient amount of hormones, the cycle starts and then at that time, certain oocytes, not all the oocytes, right? Ovaries are containing thousands and thousands of oocytes at the time of birth. We will discuss that with the advancing age, their number keeps on reducing because of follicular atresia. So, the thousands and thousands of oocytes which are present in both the ovaries, they are not going to resume their meiosis simultaneously, not all of them. A group of follicles, a pool of follicles start developing in a particular area of the ovary in response to LH and FSH. LH is what? Luteinizing hormone, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone, right? These are gonadotropins. So, a pool of follicles start developing and the oocyte present in them are in the dictate stage. The resumption of meiosis occurs just prior to ovulation when the follicle has attained the size of a graphene follicle and the oocyte which is present inside the graphene follicle that is the dictate oocyte, it is going to resume its meiosis when ovulation is about to occur that is when LH surge occurs. We will discuss LH surge also. When there is sharp increase in the level of LH prior to ovulation, then the resumption of meiosis happens in that particular oocyte. 
So, from the dictate U side, the meiosis resumes, but again gets arrested at metaphase 2 stage. The meiosis again gets arrested and it is the metaphase 2 stage. That means, the oocyte which is released from the ovary is not ovum. It has not completed its meiosis. It is still in the arrested stage of metaphase 2. So, we call it what? Secondary oocyte. Right? In this diagram, if I have to show that ovulation is happening in this graphene follicle, say this graphene follicle ruptures and the structure which will be released from the ovary, it is not ovum. This structure is what? It is secondary oocyte. So, secondary oocyte enters into the fallopian tube. We will discuss the structure of fallopian tube. The fimbri, the finger-like processes of the fallopian tube, they are encircling the ovary. They create a sucking action to suck the released oocyte. So, that oocyte which has been released from the ovary is secondary oocyte. It is arrested at uh, metaphase 2 stage of the meiosis. So, we call it secondary oocyte. Now, when will the meiosis be completed? When will the ovum be formed? When the secondary oocyte enters into the fallopian tube, if the sperms are present, that means if sexual intercourse has happened or if copulation has happened and there are sperms in the fallopian tube, then there are chances that a sperm can enter into the secondary oocyte and then this sperm entry gives a stimulus to the secondary oocyte to complete its meiosis. At that time, ovum is formed. So, when is the ovum formed? When the sperm enters into the secondary oocyte. So, we can write that thing here. I will write that this ovum structure which we say is the female gamete, ovum is formed when this secondary oocyte which we were just talking about, secondary oocyte arrested at the metaphase 2 stage, secondary oocyte will form ovum if fertilization occurs. When you say fertilization, that means entry of sperm. So, it is the entry of sperm into the secondary oocyte which gives it a stimulus to complete its meiosis which has been arrested at metaphase 2 stage. Now, that ovum then changes into the zygote because the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the ovum, they have the homologous chromosomes, they come to lie side by side and a diploid cell called zygote is formed. If fertilization does not happen, if the sperms are not there in the fallopian tube, then what? Then that secondary oocyte will survive for maximum 24 hours and after that it dies and it is destroyed by phagocytes of the female reproductive tract without leaving any scar of its existence. So, that secondary oocyte will be destroyed in the fallopian tube itself. Right? Let us have a quick recap of what we discussed. We said that primordial germ cells are present in both the ovaries before birth. They undergo mitosis to form oogonia. Oogonia undergo growth phase to form primary oocytes. Oogonia can form more oogonia also by mitosis. Meiosis starts but gets arrested at diplotene stage. The oocytes are called dictate oocytes. At the time of birth, all the oocytes in both the ovaries are dictate oocytes. Resumption of meiosis occurs just prior to ovulation, that is during puberty when the menstrual cycle starts, but again gets arrested at metaphase 2 stage. And the oocyte which has been arrested in the metaphase 2 stage is called secondary oocyte. This secondary oocyte will form the ovum if the fertilization occurs. Otherwise, it will be destroyed in the fallopian tube itself without leaving any scar of its existence. Now, let us see this oogenesis in a different way. I will show you how many number of cells they will be produced. See, this is oogonia. Single oogonia will be called as oogonium, you can say. Right? So, oogonia or the oogonium, this undergoes growth and it forms primary oocyte. 2n refers to what? 2n refers to diploid number of chromosomes. 
this is primary oocyte. Now, we'll show that meiosis 1 completed here. Meiosis 1 completed. When meiosis 1 is completed, we get one secondary oocyte and one small cell which is called first polar body or polocyte. You know that the ultimate result in meiosis is formation of four daughter cells. So, when meiosis 1 is completed, here I have written completed, you get one cell that is secondary oocyte and another cell that is first polar body. This secondary oocyte enters into the fallopian tube and if it is fertilized by a sperm, then you get ovum. So, I will say this is ovum and another small cell which is called second polar body. So, second polar body is formed in the fallopian tube when fertilization occurs. This first polar body, it is a small cell with negligible amount of ooplasm and it generally does not divide, but it can divide also. So, we say may or may not divide to form two cells. So, we can see that in oogenesis from one oogonia, we are getting one functional ovum and two to three polar bodies. Ultimate result of meiosis is what? Formation of four daughter cells. But in this case, what is happening? The division of cytoplasm is unequal. That is the reason one bigger cell called ovum is formed, which has large amount of ooplasm and three small cells with negligible amount of ooplasm and they cannot undergo fertilization. These three small cells are called polar bodies. What is the fate of polar bodies? They are destroyed by phagocytes. So, ultimately we get one ovum. Why nature has done this thing? If there is equal division of uh, this ooplasm, then every cycle or every month there will be formation of the four functional gametes. Male is producing millions of sperms. Those sperms are deposited in the female reproductive tract at the time of copulation. So, every time there can be formation of the four babies. Human uterus cannot sustain multiple pregnancies. In our forthcoming lectures, will understand that also that why is it so that human uterus cannot sustain multiple offsprings. Whenever there are multiple offsprings in the uterus, twins or triplets or quadruplets, the chances of miscarriage are very high. So, nature has done this process that there is unequal division of the ooplasm and one functional ovum and two to three small polar bodies are formed which are destroyed by phagocytes. One cell has to have more amount of ooplasm because the sperm which is going to enter into it does not contain cytoplasm. It has very less amount of cytoplasm. So, when cleavage divisions have to happen because when the zygote is formed, it undergoes cleavage divisions. The daughter cells will be formed. Nutrition is required for that. From where the nutrition will come? So, ovum, the functional cell has to gather more amount of ooplasm as a nutrition for the forthcoming cleavage divisions. Right? So, that was about the process of oogenesis. In short, what is oogenesis? Formation of the female gamete. When does it start? It starts during intrauterine life of the female baby when she is still inside the uterus of the mother. It starts but gets arrested. It resumes but again gets arrested. And finally, it is completed when the sperm enters into the secondary oocyte which is there in the fallopian tube. So, with that, we end up this section here only. Thank you.